Good evening, and welcome to the Crypto Overnighter. I'm Nicodemus, and I will be your host as we take a look at the latest cryptocurrency news and analysis. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. And remember, none of this is financial advice. And it's 10 p.m. Pacific on Wednesday, August 2nd, 2023. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter, where we have no sponsors, no hidden agendas, and no BS. But we do have the news, so let's talk about that. We're diving deep into the political cauldron as two presidential contenders make their Bitcoin pitches. Finance makes her triumphant return to Japan, and Ripple's CEO gives the SEC a piece of his mind. We'll then delve into Terraform's pursuit of FTX and the impact of Fitch's ratings downgrade on the world of crypto. And to cap it all off, we're heading east to the world's largest democracy, India, as they take the lead in shaping the G20 crypto conversation. So grab your popcorn, settle in, and let's get this show on the road. Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is a longtime environmental advocate. He's taken a surprising stance on Bitcoin's environmental impact. Interesting because before he ran for president, environmental concern is what he was known for. That and being a Kennedy. Now, he's not concerned that Bitcoin is as harmful to the environment as many claim. RFK Jr. has been courting Bitcoin supporters and advocating on their behalf. He even plans to exempt Bitcoin from capital gains tax if he's elected and to back the US dollar with finite assets like gold, silver, and Bitcoin. He's also a Bitcoin investor himself, having bought two Bitcoins for each of his seven children. On the other side of the political spectrum, we have Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. He also expressed his admiration for Bitcoin, but he's drawn a line. He won't use Bitcoin as a commodity to stabilize the U.S. dollar. Ramaswamy believes the U.S. Federal Reserve should focus solely on dollar stability, and while he is a Bitcoin fan, he doesn't see it fitting into the commodity basket to stabilize the dollar. He's also a Bitcoin investor and has spoken at Bitcoin conferences. Kennedy's stance on Bitcoin's environmental impact is a significant shift from the usual narrative. It's not just about the environment, it's about freedom to transact. His support for Bitcoin and his plans to integrate it into the U.S. financial system show a progressive approach that resonates with the crypto community. Ramaswamy's position, though supportive of Bitcoin, is more cautious. His refusal to use Bitcoin to stabilize the U.S. dollar reflects a traditional approach to financial stability. It's a clear contrast to Kennedy's progressive ideas, and it highlights the divide in political thinking around cryptocurrencies. Folks, what we're seeing here is a battle of ideologies. Kennedy's approach is a breath of fresh air for all of us who believe in the power of cryptocurrency. He's not just talking the talk, he's walking the walk. His plans could revolutionize the way we see and use Bitcoin in our economy. By contrast, Ramaswamy, though a fan of Bitcoin, he's holding back. Some have said he's not ready to embrace the future, and that's a missed opportunity. I cannot and will not tell you how to vote in the upcoming election. I will just say this. We do need bold leaders who are willing to take on the tough questions like these and not leave them to the unelected bureaucrats like SEC Chair Gary Gensler. The future of crypto is bright, and we need politicians who see that and who are ready to act. The choice is clear. Embrace the future or cling to the past. Let's make sure our voices are heard. From the American political theater to the Japanese market arena, Bitcoin is making a bold entrance. Make sure you're subscribed to stay on top of these global moves. The world's largest crypto exchange made a triumphant return to Japan. Binance launched a dedicated platform for the Japanese market, offering 34 tokens for spot trading. They're not offering futures trading just yet. They need a special license for that. That said, this is the largest number of tokens offered by any exchange in Japan. Binance's reentry into the Japanese market is a strategic move. They've acquired a local exchange, previously known as Secure Exchange Bitcoin, and renamed it Binance Japan Incorporated. This acquisition has allowed Binance to fully comply with local regulations, a crucial step given Japan's strict regulatory environment. Putting Binance aside here for a second, it looks like Japan is becoming a welcoming space for crypto in Asia. It's continuously introducing regulations to attract crypto firms and investors. Binance's successful entry into the Japanese market is a clear sign of this positive trend. Binance's move is also significant because it's offering its own Binance coin in Japan for the first time. This could lead to an influx of new liquidity from Japan, potentially impacting market prices. Binance's strategy of acquiring operating licenses, as seen in Japan, is a smart response to regulatory challenges. It's a clear demonstration of how crypto exchanges can adapt and thrive in different regulatory environments. 
This is in sharp contrast with Binance's current difficulties in Europe, the US, and Nigeria. Binance's reentry into the Japanese market is a big win for the crypto community. It's a testament to the resilience and adaptability of crypto exchanges. It also shows that despite regulatory hurdles, there is a clear path forward for crypto in the global economy. From the land of the rising sun to the courtrooms of the SEC, Ripple's CEO is fighting back. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the legal drama. As most of you know, Ripple's been in a legal conflict with the US SEC. The SEC accused Ripple of violating the federal securities law, but a recent ruling concluded that Ripple's XRP should not be classified as a security, or at least not always. Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse has been vocal about his disapproval of the SEC's tactics, specifically their use of Ripple's voluntarily published XRP markets reports. The SEC's decision to use these reports against Ripple raised concerns about the potential misuse of transparent disclosures in legal battles. Ripple has been committed to transparency and open communication with its stakeholders, including investors and the broader crypto community. Other prominent XRP supporters have voiced their disapproval of the SEC's move. Garlinghouse said the company initiated the reports with the intention of voluntarily offering updates on its XRP holdings. However, the CEO said that these reports were later used against the company in the SEC's lawsuit. The SEC's actions against Ripple have been seen by many as an overreach and an attempt to stifle innovation in the crypto space. The use of Ripple's transparency reports against them in court has been criticized as a weaponization of transparency. This case highlights the delicate balance between regulation and innovation and the need for clear guidelines and rules that protect consumers without stifling growth in the rapidly evolving world of digital currencies. The ruling that XRP is not a security in certain contexts, but may be considered as such in specific circumstances, adds complexity to the regulatory landscape. It underscores the need for nuanced understanding and regulation of cryptocurrencies, recognizing that they do not fit neatly into traditional legal categories. Folks, this is a glaring example of government overreach and the misuse of power. Ripple took the high road, voluntarily providing transparency to the market, only to have it used against them. It should be a concern for anyone who believes in financial freedom and the potential of decentralized technology. The SEC's actions are not just an attack on Ripple. They're an attack on the entire crypto community. They're trying to put the genie back in the bottle, but they can't. Cryptocurrency is here to stay, and it's time for the government to recognize that and stop trying to stifle innovation. Speaking of legal battles, Terraform Labs has taken the fight to the next level. Join the conversation in the comments below and let me know what you think. A bankruptcy judge signed an order allowing Terraform Labs to subpoena FTX. Terraform Labs is seeking information on digital wallets from 2022. The judge in the FTX bankruptcy proceedings is permitting Terraform Labs to subpoena relevant information for their ongoing case against the US SEC. Terraform Labs claims their algorithmic stablecoin and governance token encountered issues due to a potential attack by short sellers. FTX declared bankruptcy in November of the same year. Terraform Labs fell apart in mid-2022 when its stablecoin project TerraUSD collapsed. The legal debate on whether cryptocurrencies are subject to SEC rules has become more complicated. As we said last night, U.S. District Judge Jed Rakoff is allowing the SEC to proceed with its legal case against Terraform Labs. This goes against the decision of Judge Torres last month that said XRP was not a security in some cases. The separate findings complicate the regulatory outlook for the crypto industry. Under Chair Gensler, the SEC has been emphasizing an enforcement-heavy approach to the industry. Some people call it enforcement by regulation. I call it strangulation by regulation, but that's just me. This opposing legal view adds new confusion for crypto investors and further uncertainty concerning other SEC lawsuits. What we're seeing here is a clear example of the government's overreach into the world of crypto. The SEC's relentless pursuit against Terraform Labs and FTX shows us central authorities are trying to control and manipulate the decentralized world of crypto. We must not let the government stifle innovation and freedom in the financial world. The future of cryptocurrency depends on our ability to resist these attempts to regulate and control what should remain a free and open market. From subpoenas to credit downgrades, the financial world is shaking. Like this episode if you're keeping an eye on the future of the dollar. Fitch Ratings is one of the world's big three credit rating agencies. They downgraded the United States long-term foreign currency issuer default rating from AAA to AA+. The downgrade reflects expectations of fiscal deterioration, growing government debt, and erosion of governance. 
The U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio is expected to reach 118% by 2025, nearly three times the AAA median. Interest payments alone are expected to comprise 3.6 of the GDP by 2033. Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other major cryptocurrencies have swung wildly over the last month. Bitcoin's price almost doubled since late last year, helped by a shock BlackRock crypto flip and XRP developers' victory over the SEC. Mark Yusko is the chief executive of hedge fund Morgan Creek Capital Management. Yusko predicts the Bitcoin price could soar as high as $300,000 by 2028. Bitcoin briefly topped $30,000 after Fitch's downgrade. It rose 2.1% to around $29,498, up almost 80% so far this year, but still down over 55% from its all-time high in 2021. The downgrade could be the push Bitcoin needs to resurface above the $30,000 psychological level. The downgrade by Fitch is a significant event that's rippled through both traditional and crypto markets. The U.S. government's fiscal mismanagement and growing debt burden are alarming indicators of economic instability. The downgrade could bolster the theoretical case for decentralized currency, as damage to the central government's credit could raise demand for a stateless currency like Bitcoin. The prediction of Bitcoin reaching $300,000 by 2028 is a bold one. It requires Bitcoin to surpass gold's $6 trillion market capitalization. That's a bold statement indeed. It reflects a growing belief in the potential of cryptocurrencies to challenge traditional financial systems. The upcoming Bitcoin halving in April next year, reducing supply of new Bitcoin, is expected to be a catalyst for price rises. By the way, none of this is financial advice. I'm not your guru. I'm nobody's trading coach. So don't go buying Bitcoin because of what you hear from me. That said, the writing is on the wall. The government's reckless handling of the economy, the erosion of trust in traditional financial systems, and the rise of decentralized currencies are not mere coincidences. What they are is clear signs of a shifting paradigm. The downgrade by Fitch is more than just a financial hiccup. It's a wake-up call. It's a reminder that the government's mismanagement and the central bank's flawed policies are driving people toward alternatives like Bitcoin. And why not? Bitcoin fixes many of gold's problems and is equally scarce and becoming scarcer, unlike gold. The future is here, the future is decentralized, and it's time to recognize that the old ways are gone. The revolution is here and it's powered by crypto. And as we watch the mighty dollar stumble, India rises to lead the G20 crypto conversation. Share this episode with friends who need to know about these world-shaping decisions. And this brings us to our cover story for tonight. India is the world's largest democracy. They're taking the reins of the G20 group of nations. And they're not just sitting back. They're pushing for a global coordination on cryptocurrency rules. India released a G20 presidency input note. It's proposing a path for globally coordinated rules for crypto assets. The international push for clearer policies has gained momentum under the Indian G20 presidency. They're calling for coordination and consistent implementation of crypto asset regulations. They want the IMF and the FSB to examine regulatory arbitrage. They're focusing on cross-border information sharing and consumer protection. They're coordinating with international organizations like the Financial Action Task Force, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision, and the Bank of International Settlements. They're setting the stage for a new era in crypto regulation. So what does this mean? India's presidency note on crypto is an effort to have its suggestions included in the framing of global crypto rules. They're calling for tougher rules for crypto asset activities and global stablecoin arrangements. They're asking for action points like promoting the effective implementation of the FSB's recommendations. They're focusing on macro financial implications and risks specific to emerging markets and developing economies. They're conducting outreach to all jurisdictions to make sure they're aware of the risks. They're handing responsibility for coordinating the work around global crypto rules to the IMF and the FSB. Now, let's talk about what this means for you. India's move is a clear signal that the world is waking up to the power and potential of cryptocurrency. But it's also a warning. Governments and central banks are involved. They're trying to regulate, control, and possibly even stifle crypto. And let's be clear, India is no friend to crypto, not at all. They've enacted a regressive 30% tax on crypto and don't even let you write off your losses. So we'll keep fighting for financial freedom, for decentralization, for the right to control our own money. India's actions tell us we must remain vigilant. I don't like this business of them handing off responsibility to the IMF and the FSB. 
That's why we must keep pushing for a world where crypto is free from the shackles of government control. So what happened? In the world of politics, Kennedy and Ramaswamy are placing their bets on Bitcoin, each with their own twist. Kennedy's embracing the future, Ramaswamy's playing it safe. Binance danced its way back into Japan, showcasing resilience and adaptability. Ripple's Garling House is throwing punches at the SEC, standing up for transparency and innovation. Terraform Labs is pulling no punches, taking legal action against FTX, while the SEC continues its controversial strangulation by regulation. Fitch's credit downgrade of the US is shaking the financial world and Bitcoin's rising to the occasion, with predictions soaring as high as 300,000 by 2028. And finally, India is stepping into the limelight, leading the G20 crypto conversation, a move that's both promising and cautionary. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. If you enjoyed tonight's show, then please like, follow, subscribe, leave a rating, or maybe a review. And in the meantime, we'll see you tomorrow night.